And Kiwis have lost 23 million bucks to scams in the last 18 months, with the majority of victims staying silent about being duped. On top of that, 70% of small businesses are being conned out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, with fake invoices and other haves. And it seems romance scams can break the heart as well as the bank. So how do you avoid them? BNZ's Head of Financial Crime, Ashley Kai Fong, says swindles are seriously big business. We've seen cases where people have lost thousands, they've lost their life savings um, to, to these scammers and, and it's really, really heartbreaking. So what are the most common kinds of scams that you're seeing? The most common one we see is a remote access scam. So basically what um, the scammer will do is ring their victim, say that there might be something wrong, that they're from their telecommunications company, that there might be something wrong with their internet. Um, or they might say they're from um, a, the, a victim's bank or their credit card company saying that there's something wrong with um, a payment. Then they'll get the victims to download remote access software. There are a number of them out there. One, ones that spring to mind at the moment are AnyDesk and um, TeamViewer, but they're not the only ones. There's, there's a whole suite of them, and what that does is give the scammer access into um, the victim's computer or their mobile phone. So what happens from that point, Ashley? Do they, are they then sort of delving into your bank account and, and um, skimming off money? Yeah, so, so what, what the scammer will then tell the victim is that in order to just test the system, um, they will need to log into their internet banking and then... Um, unfortunately, the victims are giving away all of their banking credentials to the scammer. And at that stage, what people should be asking themselves is, for example, if it's from a telecommunications company, why would they need to know my bank account details? So you are the bank's head of financial crime. I'm wondering how much of the... Uh, the crime that you're looking at are these kinds of scams. Would it be half of what you're seeing or more? Uh, sig significantly more. Um, so so we're probably looking at the work that my um, guys do. Approximately 70 to 80 per cent of the of the investigations work relates to some type of scam. Wow, that seems really high. So obviously there are a lot of people who are falling victim here, but I notice from your material that only, um, well, 61% of people are not reporting it. What's the problem here? The problem is um, the victims feel embarrassed a lot of the time, and they're embarrassed because they think that they've fallen for a scam which they shouldn't have. The reality is, is that these scammers have... Uh, excellent at uh, socially engineering their victims and and allowing them to kind of do things and lead them down the path that they need to. Um, and what we really want to do is get that embarrassment factor out and actually say to people who have have been approached or victim or have actually become victims and um, have given away money or have lost money to it is. First of all, if you've lost money, get in touch with your bank as soon as possible. How do you protect relatives who may fall victim to this? Romance scams are probably one of the most heartbreaking scams that we see. What tends to happen is that um, people might be lonely, so they go to web um, dating sites and, and look for their ideal uh, friend or or. Um, hopefully the, the new soulmate. It's about people being lonely. So if you've got a relative who has been widowed or um, is looking for, looking for a companion, etc., the best thing that you can do as a family member is actually go and talk to them and, and keep in constant, constant contact, whether that be on the phone, um, whether that be visit them every so often, um, because it's that um, companionship that unfortunately these victims are, are looking for um, well, you can probably fill that gap by doing that. And then it's about talking about what's, what's occurring. So, Ashley, the one big thing is if you think you have been duped, speak up, get some help. Yep, totally. Um, if the, the, if the one message that I could leave uh, the listeners with is anything, it's um, 
don't be embarrassed. Um, speak up and um, hopefully uh, do it do it quickly. And if you've lost any money, we might be able to get it back for you. Um, or if you're not uh, don't want to talk to your bank, then actually there are other people such as NetSafe, the police, um, certain Z that they can contact as well. And that's BNZ's head of financial crime, Ashley Kaifong.